Here, off the air, is now officially over. <laughs> anyway, we're delighted that all of you are here. We also welcome those who may be watching us online. And if you're a guest to the house, we especially welcome you. We can only hope and pray that your time here encourages your spirit uh, and your life, and that you leave here stronger in faith uh, than when you came in. A couple of announcements, and we'll be on our way. Today is a, a pretty special day for lots of reasons. One of which is that we are celebrating, recognizing one piece of our expanded, expansive ministry called the Lutheran Women uh, in Missions. And this is uh, part of the Lutheran Women's Missionary League, for those who remember the old title. And our branch of that, of course, is known as the Sand Dollars. So if you see a lot of purple uh, around you today, uh, that's why. So if you're not wearing purple, you didn't get the memo. But, uh, <laughs> So uh, we're celebrating uh, all that they have and continue to do among us here in the servant ministry. There, there is also a big sale out there, so uh, please encourage you after, don't do it right now, but after late sales, uh, you know, go out and, uh, and take some calories home. They tell me all of the things come with no fat, but I don't know. Anyway, more importantly, I guess today is also the blessing of the animals. Uh, we, Try to do this historically uh, as close to the feast day of St. Francis of Assisi as possible. This feast day in the church here is October the 4th. And so right after late service today, yours truly will be sitting on a chair outside the front door um, and uh, with dog biscuits and cat treats in hand. <laughs> so if you bring a pipe on, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. But whatever you bring, I will try to offer um, a word of blessing. It's just a way of recognizing unique place that pets have in our lives. They start out as pets, and over time they become family. So uh, if you've brought something along or intend to bring something along, I'll be out there and look forward to doing that with you. This is the last day for accepting uh, donations to the Orphan Grain Train. Uh, and if you're not familiar with that, again, go on the website, you'll see the link. Uh, all of these things are being collected down in room four. Um, and they will be taken up to the warehouse uh, on Wednesday of this week. So uh, if you haven't gotten stuff, then you have two days of grace left. Uh, Orphan Grain Train always looks forward to the contributions from this congregation. Uh, you are exceedingly generous. We do it twice a year. Um, and uh, I hope that you feel some sense of satisfaction, if that's the right word, that whatever you bring in here, will bless people probably on the other side of the world, people whom you will never meet, but people who will see this as a sign of love and compassion. We also are now collecting uh, supplies for the hurricane uh, healing re relief effort. I'm sure you've seen the post on uh, the news and that uh, Western North Carolina, especially hard hit. Uh, this one's close to my heart because I did several events in there for 35 years. And I slept on the floor of the church for 35 years that's doing all the collecting right now. So I know the place very well. And um, if you are, you've been very generous, and if you continue to be generous, that would be great. This is not going to be a thing that goes out overnight. Uh, we'll be doing this for a long time um, because the recovery effort is, is going to be significant. So if you need more information about that, see Gail Jamal or I think it went out in the newsletter. Right? Yeah, okay. And also, uh, Jeremy Baldwin, our youth group, is going to be involved in helping to put all the kits together. So uh, uh, please keep that in mind and also keep people in, in prayer. We were blessed to have, in, in the Bible study today, we were blessed to have two missionaries with us. So, John and Dean uh, did some presentation. Uh, they are leaving very shortly to go back to Madagascar. Spend six months of the year there, and then come back and spend six months here uh, to work uh, in secular jobs to make money so they can take it back to Madagascar. So it's just fascinating. If you missed it, well, you missed it, but you speak that in prayer as well. Last but not least, Kathy Holstrom, as you know, one of our dear sisters in Christ, um, went to be with Christ this past week after a very long and very long illness. Her memorial service will be here on October the 26th, which is a Saturday. 
kind of the usual way we do those things is visitation with family at 10, uh, service at 11, and lunch at noon. Um, and her ashes will also be interred later in the memorial garden. So please keep Kathy's family in your prayers as we uh, remember one who was very much a part of this ministry for a very long time. That's way enough. Jerry, if you will. <coughs> strong beginning in the name of God the Father, and of God the Son, and of God the Holy Spirit. And we join together in the opening prayer. Gracious God, in their moment in time, Samuel, Mary, and Paul felt your call to serve and to follow. May you likewise open the eyes of our hearts to the ways and places where you might also be the instruments of our reconciling grace, enlighten and enable us to be your servants. Amen. Would you remain standing for the singing of the song?
My brothers and sisters, we come before Jesus to confess our sin, our struggles, and our doubts. Let us take a moment of silence to reflect on how we've been living our life in these last several days. And then let us together confess. Father, Listen again to the words of St. Paul as he wrote the house church in Rome in the first century. Those words still also now speak to us. Paul writes, Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us. In the mercy of Almighty God, Christ died for us while we we're still sinners, and for his sake, God forgives you all of your sin. Amen. 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 If you seated for the readings, they are assigned for this, the LWML, or Luke and Women in Mission Sunday. To take us back to the Old Testament, the first lesson is from 1 Samuel, and it is Samuel's call into ministry. If you know the Old Testament, Samuel was an integral figure in the narrative of the people of Israel. And this is where it all begins, where he's having a restless night and thinks it is Eli, his master, who's calling him. And Eli has to find and say, it isn't me, it's somebody bigger than me. These are good words for us to remember, too, that the call of God comes in strange ways to us. This is 1 Samuel 3, beginning at verse 1. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again the Lord called, Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. A third time the Lord called, Samuel! And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you call me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down, and if he calls you, say, Speak, the Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling as at the other time, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. This is the word of the Lord. The second lesson chosen to be read on this Luke and Women in Mission Sunday comes from the pen of St. Paul, as he wrote to the uh, first century Christian church in the city of Philippi. He's trying to encourage them, if you're looking for an ultimate role model, try Jesus on for size. And as he describes what Jesus went through and encourages us to do the same, it's a lifestyle and a mindset characterized by humility and gratitude. These are good 
good things for us in our risen life. Philippians 2, beginning at verse 5. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is given to us on this Sunday from Luke chapter 1, beginning at verse 26. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to her virgin pledge to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words. She wondered what kind of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Don't be afraid, Mary, you found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son. You are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father. David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. Well, how will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. And so the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. And even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who is said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. With heart and voice, we confess our faith in this Christ, the Son of Mary, in the word of the real statement. I believe in one God, united on high, ruler of the heavens and the earth, full of grace and mercy. I believe in the Father, who has created me in all that exists. I believe in the Son, who has redeemed me by his death and resurrection.
grace, God's mercy, and God's kind of peace. It's deep, deep in your minds and your hearts this day and always because of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the text for this uh, Lutheran Women in Mission Sunday is actually all three of the lessons. And don't worry, that doesn't mean the sermon's going to be longer. <laughs> it's the theme of the three that really counts so far in the text. Well, you listen to the lessons and you heard them talk about somebody named Samuel and a young virgin named Mary, and of course the words of Paul. Those are all very different characters. They each have their own faith story. They show up at different times. And so my question to you is, what do these three characters in the biblical narrative have in common? I think one answer might be, in their own time, in their own way, they felt the tug of God on their heart, and they responded. That's always the way God works. Anybody, especially those baptized in the name of Christ, when you feel the tug on the heart, it's God calling you to do something or to be something. Sometimes it happens in small ways, sometimes it happens in large ways, but we might wish God would find a quicker way to take care of this building kingdom thing, but we worship a funny God. He insists on working through people. And people not in the dramatic or the extraordinary, but more in the everyday ordinary. People like you. People like me. When out there, because of your faith, you take care of somebody who's in need, that's the tug of God on your heart. When you bring things in here, donations for the blessing box or you know, hurricane relief or whatever we're collecting for in the moment, that's the tug of God in your heart. When you take the time out there to listen to somebody's story and just pay attention to what they're going through and try to offer them a word of encouragement, that's really the tug of God on your heart. And when you involve yourself in here, in all of the various ministries that we have under this umbrella, things like Code Purple, and things like Showers on Friday for the Homeless Women, and things like ESL, and the Sandwich Brigade, and all the other things that go on here, that's the tug of God on your heart. LCOS is a faith family that serves. You are known in the community for that. And the two plaques that were lovingly handmade by Merv Nestor probably a dozen years ago still hang above the inside of the front door and the inside of the back door. And both signs say the same thing, service entrance. It's not a play on words, it's meant to remind us that when we come into this place, we come here to be renewed and refreshed. We gather and we are encouraged by the fellowship, by the worship, by the music, and all that goes on here, hopefully to lead stronger in faith than when we came in. But the second we walk out of these doors, you and I are called to kneel and share the love of Christ in a very broken and a very conflicted world. And the servant's entrance means serving all. Even the people who don't look like us, smell like us, talk like us, think like us, even people who sometimes take advantage of us, every one of them is somebody for whom Jesus died. We can't escape that. This is not some kind of an exclusive club. This is a world mission. This is God's design. And today we recognize one group among many here who I think do that very well. They call themselves the Sam Dollars, wonderful name. Local branch of the Lutheran Women's Missionary League or Lutheran Women in Mission. And the founding of our Sam Dollars actually happened in September of 1979. Three or four women gathered in one member's living room and decided to do this. The reason I know that is because 
The newspaper picked it up and printed an article about it. It's on the front wall of the narthex when you leave here. You can read about all of the four women who were involved. They weren't seeking publicity, they were seeking simply to share the love of Christ because they felt the tongue of God on their hearts. Today, of course, by God's grace, the sand dollars number is far more than four people. It's more like 40 or 50 people. And through the ingathering of the mites, like the widow's mites, we like to simply call it the pocket change, I guess, Every month in this room, they dutifully walk up here with their mic boxes and dump the small boxes into the big box. And all of that money that they raise, hundreds, thousands of dollars, goes to serve mission needs far beyond these doors. The sand dollars have been an invaluable part of this ministry from its very beginning. When I first came here, that was the year 2000. They had these big, heavy tables in the fellowship hall with big, heavy chairs. And it was okay because they never had to be moved. <laughs> there was very little going on here during the week. It was a small congregation. They met on Sunday, and they left. What I discovered quickly was that it was the sand dollar who always were saying, Pastor, what are the needs? Who else can we help? What can we do? And thanks be to God, we got rid of those big tables a long time ago. Not that these are much easier to manage, but they're not bad. But the sand dollars is something to celebrate, and all of those who are part of it, be proud of yourselves and what you're doing here. Many of you, of course, are not part of the sand dollars because, well, you're not wearing a purple shirt. But also for other reasons. And as far as I know, none of you are written in the biblical narrative. You're not in the league with Samuel or Mary or Paul any more than I am. Nobody will ever erect a statue in honor of you or me after we are long gone and become dust. And so you might be sitting there going, well, oh, yeah, so what? It doesn't matter who you are or what you are. If you're baptized in the name of Christ, God is tugging on your heart. Think back for a moment to your whole life experience. Think back to those moments where suddenly something deep inside of you just, just took over. When you suddenly felt like, I need to do this. I need to be involved. I need I need to, and your eyes were opened in a way that they had not been opened before. Those moments when God tugs on your heart, when God calls you in small ways and big ways, are exciting and terrifying at the same time. But living and loving as Christ intended is not simple. If you want to listen and follow what God wants you to do, it will always take you beyond what is comfortably familiar. And since what God calls you to do involves people, it's always going to be messy. And be prepared that if you choose to follow what God calls you to do, God will always be saying to you, it's about them, it's not about you. That involves some risk. It means becoming a little vulnerable. To the part of us might like to say, I'm not sure I want to follow God's leading. God may tug on the heart, but I want to make believe that I'm not listening. Think for a moment what would have happened if Samuel, having a restless night as a teenager as he was, if instead of getting up and going to Eli and saying, Here I am, you called me, if he had just plugged in his earbuds and put on Bluetooth and listened to music and snored the night away. Think what would have happened if Mary had listened politely to what Gabriel boldly declared and simply said, yeah, I'm not interested, I just bought a wedding dress. And think of what would happen if Paul had remained stubbornly pharisaical and had remained proud of it. The narrative in scripture would have been 
far different. But the truth is, none of them were able to say no to God. They felt the tug, they felt the call, they knew the risks, and they went anyway. Ignoring the tug of God in your heart is not something that's going to make for a peaceful night. God has a way of being gently relentless. God will not give you away, not you get away with being silent for long. And when our last breath comes, I think each one of us would like to feel as though our life had mattered. That somehow our words and actions had made a little bit of difference in the world we found ourselves in. But somehow the compassion we tried to offer each of us in our own way helped a little bit to settle down this conflicted world and the people in it. The courage to follow God's leading and God's calling comes in the gospel itself. If you read those words or listen to the words of that epistle that said, Jesus followed the tongue of God's heart. It took him way beyond the comfortable familiarity of Nazareth, a little hill town that nobody ever went to. And since it was involved with people, it was always messy. And then too, as Paul says in his beautiful words, he emptied himself of honor, of glory, of privilege, and assuming the role of a servant became obedient unto death, even death on the cross. That's the gospel we proclaim. And because he did all of that for us long ago, that's where we find the courage to do all that we can in following him now. Sometimes what we will do in his name will be a momentary gesture that will easily be done and forgotten. Other times, other times it may change a life and nothing will ever be the same again. Sometimes following Jesus and trying to live out your calling costs very little. Other times it involves genuine sacrifice. Whatever we do in the name of Christ, it's done to point the world to him and away from us. The biblical word for all of this calling and tugging is vocation, which is the Latin word for vocatio, or calling. And the more that our hearts and minds are open to where God is tugging us and pushing us and shoving us, the clearer what God intends our vocation to be becomes. One of my favorite authors says it this way, your vocation is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. May Samuel, Paul, Mary, and the Sandals inspire each of us to listen to God's tugging and calling and to follow. Let me so in your life and mine at all this time. <clears throat>
Right to the right, so if you were in here. The peace of the Lord be with you now and always. And also with you. We share that peace enthusiastically with each other. Before we move into the prayers, John was asked to make an announcement. So, John, would you be uh, kind enough to do that? In the worship hall, you know, Marty the dumpster was brought in. Um, heard all of you and all of you in together in the work. If you go in at the round of dumpsters, to the very back, there's a little bit of a walk right in.
So no household trash, and you, can, and you cannot get rid of your spouse that way either. <laughs> In our prayers on this day, we remember many in our own church family here, especially we pray for Ed Brown, who is still at Christiana Hospital um, after suffering a um, significant reaction to the intrusion therapy that he's going through. Uh, so this is a difficult challenge uh, for the doctors. Um, Lana, we prayed for her also in the first service. She was on her way up there. We also have to pray for Bud Johnson, friend of Eric Davison, likewise being treated for cancer. Also, Noretta Burke, who will go in tomorrow night, I believe, to get the court uh, to start her uh, chemotherapy treatment. We also have to pray for Kara Trisla. I hope I pronounced that right. This is the daughter of Gail Jamal, who was undergoing uh, significant uh, medical testing. We also pray for, uh, obviously, our Sand dollars and for all that they do and are among us. Uh, we pray for Brett and Lisa. Uh, so Brett is the guy over there playing the bass, and Lisa and his wife over there in the peanut gallery. So, uh, they were delightfully married here last week. So uh, we're going to pray for them again. I prayed for them last Sunday, but we'll do it again because now they're here. <laughs> and if you get to see them afterwards, please give them a holy hug and wish them well. Uh, we also, of course, will pray for uh, those who are mourning, and especially the family and friends of Kathy Polston. So again, the service of memorial is the 26th. For those marking milestones, we pray for Carol Popham, Ricky Frederick, Sally DeVilvis, Joan Offner, Fred Burke, Susan Alt, and Louis and Barbara Geidel. And so for these and others, we pray. Out of grace, we catch our breath and we step into this moment, taking you at your word that when we come together, when we lift our concerns, our praise, our thanksgiving, our petitions to you, that you're there to hear and that you're willing to listen, and that in your own way and time, we will act and respond. Bless us then as we bring these things before you on this day. We pray especially for the world beyond these doors, a place where there is a great deal of conflict, we pray, O oh God, that all the people who are struggling just to survive or to find a new life, we pray that you, the author of peace, would find a way to get behind the stubborn hearts and wills of people so that there might indeed be the glimpse of a reconciling hope. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We do indeed pray for our own country in which we live and in which we love. We pray especially in this restless time that we are in. That you would grant us the patience to listen more than speak and to try to understand more than judge. Give us the grace, O oh Lord, to step back from all of the rhetoric, from all of the voices, from all of the sound, and just to spend the time thinking about what it means to be together in a country, what it means to work together for the sake of the common good. Give us the strength and the courage and endurance to keep our eyes on you, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray, O oh God, for the church throughout the world that might continue to be persistent in its witness to grace. We pray that you would keep tugging on the heart of all those who bear the mark of baptism. Encourage and strengthen them, O oh God, to accept your calling and to become an incarnation of your love and grace, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray, God, for many people on our minds and on our hearts. We pray especially today for Ed. Yes. Lana, Lana, Bud, Bud. Noretta, Noretta, Tara. Tara. O oh God of grace, wherever they are in this moment, we pray that you will be with them. Let them know that your love for them is great and that your peace is near. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray, O oh God, for those who are mourning. We pray for the family of Kathy. Yes. We pray that you might grant them the comfort and the certainty of the resurrection hope and promise, Lord, in your mercy. Each one of us, O oh God, comes into this room with other people on our minds and on our hearts. And so we are bold now to shout their names out loud, trusting that you do hear and that you will answer. And so on this day, we also pray for
The names we so gently whisper, O oh God, are precious to us. And they share our life's journey and time. We pray that wherever they are in this moment, that they would know that you are near. That they would be assured of your love and of ours. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray, O oh God, for the Sandalas and their continuing ministry among this faith family as they touch lives way beyond these doors. We pray, God, you would continue to give them insight and wisdom and courage and, and determination to be your hands and your feet. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray, oh God, for the animals that are part of our life. They start out as pets, but over time they become family. And sometimes more precious to us than we realize. We ask your blessing especially upon those that we will bless today. We pray that you would grant them peace and their owners as well. Lord, in your mercy. We pray to God for all those who are marking milestones in life. We pray especially this week for Carol, Carol Ricky, Ricky, Sally, Sally Joan, Joan, Fred, Fred Susan, 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 Lewis and Barbara, Lewis and, Barbara and also Garden and Lisa. Oh God, as all of these look back to the beginning of their journey, to what has happened since, we pray you would give them courage to continue to walk boldly into the future. Surround them with the peace and with the comfort that only you can give. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray, oh God, that you have blessed us through this time we have spent in this place. We pray that we leave here stronger in faith than when we came in. And we pray especially that as we walk through those doors to go back out, we look above and see that sign, service entrance, and realize again what that means that we have our minds and hearts open to your calling, wherever you need us to be, whatever you need us to do in the world in which we find ourselves. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.